Hello and welcome. We're going to work on our shopping cart today. We have our cart and our cart total and we know we could add things to our cart as well and they'll be in there. So we have that all worked out so far but we need to make this all look correct. So let's get started. One quick change I want to make from the last video is to go into front end SRC down to app and we're not going to be importing a cart we're going to import shopping cart from pages. Oh, shopping cart, perfect. Now we can go ahead and put the cart in there, but we know that this page will be the shopping cart and it will also be below it will be your uh, Stripe information. So your payment info, your checkout would be below it. So just move down to where we had cart, change that to shopping cart, and I'm pretty sure we did everything else we need to do. Take a quick look in pages, shopping cart. Yes, cart is being returned right there. Let's move back to cart and see what we have here. We have the cart itself, the container there. We have the title, the items, and the cart total. Let's first style the cart and cart title. So we'll make a new file for that in SCSS down here. So we'll add a new file and we'll call it underscore cart dot SCSS. In here at first we'll add import right away that variables file. Then we will dot cart and we know we also have end underscore underscore title. So there's our cart and our cart title. Let's bring this into the main.scss. We will add import dot slash to the cart. All right, we're in there. Make sure you do CD into your front end. Make sure you've built out your packages and so on, but then you can yarn run scss. And we'll head back into the cart file, save it, and we can see that it is working. So let's set up the container for the cart here. We'll have a position of relative, a display of flex, a flex direction of column, align items to the center, do a width of 100 viewport width, VW, and a padding around all of it. So we'll just do padding to rem. Let's take a look now at what we're working with here. Now we have the cart in the middle and we won't have uh, the things that are in the cart right now because this will keep on refreshing. Uh, but this is what we want. We want to move it to the middle and that's what we did here. We don't have the padding that we want and that's because I didn't put a semicolon here. That should fix that. There we are. We've moved off the top a bit. Now let's get that title ready. We'll do the text align at center. We'll do a color that we've been using a whole lot. Uh, make sure the dollar sign's there and then color blue light. We'll have a margin top of one rem, a font weight of 800, and a font size of a whopping four rem. So a nice big title for the cart. And there it is, that looks good to me. That's what we're looking for. So now let's move into the cart items. That's what we actually have to design here. And before working on any of the design, I want to finish up a little bit of the HTML here or the JSX as we would call it. So let's go down to the JSX and get started. In item list, move down past price. So we have the price and now we need to be able to do the sales price as well. So let's bring in sale, import, sale, and that's from dummy data. It's up to dummy data courses. And we have our sale inside of there. So instead of just displaying element.price, what we will do is write el.sale opt-in. And if they are opted in for the sale, we will do the el.price 
times the sell, or else we will just do the el dot price, and that's how we display that there. After that, we're going to need a remove from cart icon. So let's get started on that with a div and class name equal to cart under uh, cart dash item underscore underscore remove. Then inside of there, we're going to bring in a an icon. So we are going to import ourselves an icon. The icon is t i delete outline that should be right so ti delete outline comes from react icons dash ti and mine changed to ts config for a while it's just ti is what i want okay now we'll go back down here to the cart item remove and just put in that outline right here, ti delete outline, and we should have it. And we do want to make this functional here. So let's finish up our Redux here, our, our action creators. Go to Redux, uh, actions, and then cart actions. We have add to cart. We're going to need a remove from cart. So export const remove from cart. And that's the same thing, the cart and the item. And then we will dispatch. And in the body, we're going to do a very similar thing. New cart is equal to cart.filter. And you can see where we're getting cart from. It's right above right here. We'll filter through the elements. And let's point to, you know, let me get this in its own braces like that, uh, so in its own parentheses like that, and we'll point to the element.id not being equal to the item.id. So return everything where the element ID isn't equal to the item ID. So that's how we're going to remove something from the cart. And then we do our const new total that will just equal our cart total function that we made in the last video with new cart passed in. Finally, we're going to do the exact same thing as we have here. So we'll grab that, we'll paste it in, and we're not going to give an alert from removed from cart because you'll be on the cart page itself and you'll see it leave the cart. So there's no need for an alert there. Let's bring that into our cart items. Here we are in cart items and import remove from cart and that will be from up to into redux actions and cart actions so now we have our remove from cart action here and where it says div class name cart item remove we're also going to add an on click here which will fire off a function and we haven't written the function yet but we're going to do it a little out of order. So right here, we want to on click and we want to fire off that function. I don't like to do it in line, even though this would be a very simple inline function to do. Uh, I'm going to call it remove item and pass in the EL for the element. Now remove item is undefined, of course. So let's write that function const remove item, which will equal the item being passed in. And then we will dispatch, just dispatch, not dispatch event. We will dispatch remove from cart, and we will pass it the cart and the item. And remember, we're getting cart right from here. And also, if we're going to dispatch, we need use dispatch from React Redux. And then set that up real simple with const dispatch will equal use dispatch and you're good to go. Let's do a quick check on this functionality now. I'll go to the main page and add a few courses. I'll go to the cart here and let's get rid of the first one and it's gone. I'll get rid of the last one and that one's gone and then the middle one and it's gone. So it is working properly.
Now the only thing left in this piece is to make ourselves an underline to separate the elements that are in the cart, be an underline under each one of them as a separator, but we'll also have a border around the entirety of the cart, so the last underline will be unnecessary. Otherwise, we'll have two lines kind of on top of each other making a thick line due to the border of the container and the underline of the item. So let's write some code that displays this underline all the time unless it's the last element in the cart. So we could do this right under this div here. You want to still be within the div with the key, but right here. So what we want to write is, well, we're going to need access real quick to i for index. What we want to write here is i plus one, because we are indexed at zero, zero indexed here, is triple equal to cart.length and that's our question. If that's the truth, we want nothing coming back. Otherwise, we want a div with a class name equal to cart-item underscore underscore underline. Then we can just close this up. Now we have our underline here as well. So there's a bit more to keep track of in this piece than there was in the cart uh, itself. So let's get working on this. It's going to be cart item.scss when we bring it into our scss files and make sure to put the underscore before it. So cart item.scss at import dot slash variables dot cart dash item. And we are set up. Let's get this imported into the main. So at import dot slash cart item that is CSS. I'll restart this real quick here as well as I always am one to do. Back into cart item. Let's put a few items in our cart so we could see this at work. I will head back to the home page and put these three in there. Head to my cart and let's do some work. So inside of cart item, I want to have a display of grid. And let's do a height of 8 rem. We'll also have grid template columns. That'll be 5fr, 2fr, 1fr. So the first column will be five free spaces, two free spaces, and then one free spaces. And these are all proportional, as we've mentioned in other lectures here. We'll have a margin of two rem, up and down, one rem, side to side. Now we also have that underline, so n underscore underscore underline. We're going to have a border bottom. And that's all we're going to need, just one pixel solid, and then the color dash blue dash light. Oh, that got formatted a little strange. Let me just fix that up real quick. Okay, and underline. Now after that, let's get to the text portion. That was that text box, so end underscore underscore text. We'll have a display of flex, a flex direction of column. We will justify the content to space around. So that will give space in between as much as possible, but also the same amount of space that's in between will be, say, side to side or top to bottom. So we'll have some sort of margin from the top or margin from the bottom rather than being pushed directly to the top and directly to the bottom. So the space around allows us to kind of center things a little bit more, giving a little more breathing room. Next we'll have margin right. And margin right will be one rem. Let's see what we're working with here. All right, it's starting to look a bit better here. Okay, let's keep going. And we're working on the text right here. This is the text box. Um, with just these two. It has the title and the author. That's the text section. So let's dig into the title and the author. And dash dash title. In there we'll have a font size. 
which I'll do at 1.6 rem, and we'll have a font weight, which we'll do at 600. And we said author too, so and dash dash author. Inside of there, we'll have a font size of 1.2 rem. We'll take a look at that now. Okay, this is looking a lot better. We're starting to kind of see what's going on. We have our title very clearly, our author under it. Uh, we of course could write author if we want to, but right now I think this is looking pretty good. We still have price and remove to do, and I'm just going to do them over the text one. So end underscore underscore price. Inside of there, display yourself as a flex again. Flex direction to a column again justify content to center, font size is 1.5. And of course I picked that. If you'd like it to be bigger, you can of course do that. Font weight will be 600, so just a bit bold. And margin left is one rem. Let's take a look at that price now. All right, that's looking good. And we put that margin left in there for like phones and so on, because it starts to get very tight on say phones. Uh, so we have that margin left inside of there. Now this is also still kind of tight the way it is, but that's because we haven't defined its container. We're kind of just defining uh, the look of each element. Then we'll define the container, which should stretch this out a bit, but it's okay that it looks like this because it'll look a lot like this on a phone. Let's fix up that remove button. So end underscore underscore remove. And inside here, the display will still be flex. The flex direction, flex direction will be column. And the justify content to the center font size to rem. Color, we're going to use our pink color. So that was color dash pink dash dark, which comes off a little red, a little pink. And uh, change the cursor to to a pointer. Okay, now we're, we look like we have something that resembles a cart here, but we're going to need to define the actual container for this so we could stretch it fully out and we could put an outline around the entirety of it. Let's get started on that. Head back into cart items, and let's consider what we want in our container. The first thing we want is the container itself, so let's do a class name equal to cart-items underscore underscore container, and then we'll work inside of that. Then the first thing we'll want is the title, so let's have a div with a class name, and I do want this inside the container uh, because we're going to do that with the cart. The title will be uh, we're going to do that with the checkout, not the cart. The title will be within the checkout, so I'd like this to be within the container here as well. So class name equals cart underscore underscore title. We have that set up. It's just going to say cart. And then we'll do the item. So div with a class name equal to cart dash items. And that's where this goes, the items list here. And now we're going to bring in the cart total, but what's going to happen first is a div with the class name equal to cart dash items underscore underscore break. And this can be self closing. It's just going to be like a little underline. Uh, that sits above the cart total that has the total price. It's nice to have the underlined separator there. It looks pretty good. And then we could just bring in that cart total. And mine's auto importing, but I'll show you where it comes from. Import cart total from dot slash cart total. I'm going to go back to the regular cart and take away two things. I don't need the cart total anymore, and I don't need the cart title. So really all I'm returning is cart with the cart items inside of it. So we have some more styling to do here. I'm going to get rid of this cart total. Uh, we'll add a few more things to the cart again. One, two, three. And we'll go over to our cart, see them in there. 
And now we're going to style the actual container and get some outline going on. Move this guy to the right. Have a line above the total as well as a smaller separator. And we'll have a pretty good looking cart. Here we go. So inside of cart items, cart item rather, we're going to make something called cart items. So dot cart items, oh, cart dash items. Inside of cart items, we'll have a display of flex, a flex direction of column. We know we have the container, so n container. That will have also a display of flex, a flex direction column, a width of 90 VW for viewport width, a border of 2px for pixels, solid, and then we'll have our color dash blue light. Let's take a look at that. Okay, now we are full size of the screen, well, 90% of the screen, and we will have an option for this to be full size as it gets smaller too. Actually, let's type that in right now. Uh, so inside of container, we will add include at MD, width of 100%. Or you could also put 100 view width if you'd like as well. So just when it gets smaller, it'll change. We'll inspect that real quick. And as it gets smaller, there we go. It got a little more towards the edges, but not fully. And you know why that is? Let's do one more uh, at include. We'll just grab this guy right now. And I'll head over to, actually head over to cart.scss. That's where it is. It's because of the padding. So we will at include at the MD, a padding of, we'll do the two rem up and down, but then zero left and right. And there we are right on the edges. So those are our two different kind of displays here, and they look pretty good. Now let's work on the break and the total. So back to card item, and we'll go to card items, and we'll make a new one called end underscore underscore break. Inside of a break, we'll have a margin left of auto, and that will move it all the way to the right, a border bottom, that will be one pixel solid. And we're not going to do this blue, we'll just do it color dash black. See if that looks good for us. And then the width will be 20 rem. Now we should have a break on the page. There it is right here. And it is sitting above total. So let's design total as well. So end underscore underscore total. And here we'll have margin. The margin will be 2 rem, 2 rem, 2 rem, and auto. So that should move it over to the left and give it a little 2 rem from top and bottom, 2 rem from the side, all the way to the left. Font size, and that will be 1.6 rem. And the font weight, which is 600, just a bit bold. There we have it. We have a pretty good looking cart, especially for what we're looking to do to make these Stripe payments. And it is all functional. We will start implementing Stripe on the next video where we start building our checkout. Of course, there is still a bit of design to do on the checkout, but we do need to get some Stripe elements so that we can incorporate them into our design of the checkout component. And then we will do all the work to set up some payments. So great job on this one. Follow me to the next one and keep coding.